Hi, welcome to Behind the Curtain Ashland Community Theater. I'm Joe White. And I'm Katie Shander Reynolds. We're here today to talk a little bit about Gray Matter. We're going to have some guests and we're going to actually have a performance here live. Very exciting. I'm very excited. We have uh, Chris Dever and... Holly Escott is back. Excellent, excellent. So what's going on right now for Ashland Community Theater, Katie? Well, right now, hopefully our viewers are watching our mini-series that we filmed over the summer, which is airing right now, Tuesdays and Thursdays, on WACA-TV. So check your local uh, website to make sure, what, if you're Comcast or Verizon, to make sure that you can watch the interns. Uh, we also have done work on our website. Yes, you have. The A Ash lot of work. AshlandCommunityTheater.com. So I'd like to have everyone go out and take a look at it and give me some feedback. We put some pictures of our ACT players, uh, some history of our past shows, some information about our fall show. Very exciting, our fall show. Yes. What is our fall show? Our fall show is called Therapy Sessions. What's it about? It is about a group of therapists working in a community together and the patients that they have and they're all sort of coming at things from different angles and and it should be hopefully amusing it's a comedy so it's a comedy we're hoping yeah. people come down and, and when 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 are the shows i think it's november it is indeed in november the 19th 20th and 21st at the ashland middle school theater just as our prior three shows have been mm -hmm. uh, well, hopefully everyone can come out and uh, go to the website and look for the information about buying tickets for those nights so tonight, we are also going to see Grey Matter. Yes. And uh, so we're going to actually take you to the scene right now and watch it, enjoy it. When you come back, who's going to be here? We will have Chris Dever and Holly Escott right here with us in the studio to answer some very intense questions. Excellent. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Grey Matter. Yo, hey, I saw that. Excuse me? Woman, I caught you, all right? I, I don't know you. When I came in, you moved your bag. Please, I don't want any trouble. I'm not. And if you're causing trouble, I can notify someone. Look, I wasn't doing nothing. Chill. OK, then. Hey, honey, do I make you nervous? I don't even know you. That don't matter. Honey, I can still make you nervous. Look, I was in the middle of something, if you don't mind. Well, then why did you move your bag? I was getting some gum. Oh, really? Can I have me a piece? It's juicy fruit. My favorite. <sighs> oh, I, I only have one piece. Well, then give me half, then. You are bothering me. Let me figure this. I don't make you nervous, but I bother you. I'm just not in the mood for conversation. Yeah, I think it's something else. If you say so. You know what? When I walked in here, you know what you thought to yourself. You thought purse dealer, like rapist, murderer, didn't you? I thought no such thing. But you moved your bag. I was being polite by making room. I would do that for anyone. I don't buy that. Nobody buys that. It doesn't concern me if nobody buys it. That's the reason. But lady, look! There was all these empty seats I could have sat in. All right, you caught me. Unless, oh, unless you wanted me to come sit next to you. You can sit anywhere you like. Can I? Then I'm going to sit me down here. Oh, God. You know, this is so hard. Let me try this one, Goldilocks. This one right here? It ain't right either. 
you know what? These is just so damn uncomfortable. Hey, I got me an idea. Maybe I can sit where you are. You know what? Maybe I can come sit in your lap. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, lady, come on. Hello. Lady, chill out, all right? Why don't you just come sit back down, all right? Come on. You leave me alone. All right, I'm gonna sit way down here, if that'll make you happy. Ouch! Like, why are you even here? Why are you here? I came to see my parole officer. Nice. <laughs> now, see, that bothers you. And you wondered why I moved my purse. But lady, you didn't know I was here to see Mr. Parole Man when I walked in. Think. You just looked at me and assumed I was a criminal. I followed my instincts. When the fight or flight kicks in, you should listen to that. What you said about being a criminal is exactly what my gut was telling me. So, so that's why you moved your purse? Right. Well, I'll be. Smarty Pants, you saw right through me. You know, I bet everybody can. That's why they're always jumping and fidgeting when I come in the room. You know what? It's like the B.O. You don't know you got the B.O. until somebody does you a favor and tells you, but by then it's way too late. I'm sure if you dressed a little better, it might help. Oh, ouch. Oh. You have been such a big help to me here. What's your name? Why do you want to know my name? Well, I can't be telling all my convict friends that some random ass lady at the police station helped me with my styles. I'd like to put me a name to a face. I don't think you need to know my name. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Come on. If I tell you, will you leave me alone? Oh, well, let me think on that. Sure. Scout's on her. Sheila. What? That's my name, Sheila. Woman, you know it is a sin to lie. I know that. But you, you don't look like a Sheila. Sheila is a young and a beautiful lady's name. Thank you. Oh, don't get me wrong, all right? But you ain't no Sheila. You get a name at birth and you keep it for life. Even beautiful young women named Sheila eventually grow older. Yeah, but those beautiful girls don't grow up to look like you, honey. How do you know what someone should be called or not called? You said I looked like a criminal. I did not. Oh, come on. Did you or did you not? Just admit to me now that I looked like a criminal when I walked in. Remember you had that fancy-ass gut instinct? And you was right, wasn't you? Let's just let it go, okay? I haven't seen anyone at that counter in a long time. This is taking forever. I'm here on my lunch hour. If I get back to work late again, they're gonna have my ass. How, how, how long, how far did you have to walk? Walk, lady, I drove myself like a normal person, all right? Oh, don't be so sensitive. <sighs> I'm just, Look, I'm all right, all right, all right. I was assuming things about you, just like you've been assuming things about me. I ain't trying to tell you how to think, I'm just saying how it is, all right? I mean, look, you cannot be telling me that if some other elderly woman came in here instead of stinky on me, you wouldn't be having a picnic right now. You'd be sitting there exchanging recipes and complaining about Social Security. You'd be bitching about your arthritis and all. I mean, you certainly wouldn't have jumped out of your skin the way you did when I came in. Would it make you happy if I gave you my recipe for pot roast? Oh, come on. Come I don't on. give that recipe to anyone, you know, not even my sister.
The key is in the marinade. Oh my God. Look, forget it, all right? Look, you don't got to talk to me. And you certainly don't got to trust me. Oh, I don't trust anyone at this point. Somewhere between here and 13th Street, I misplaced my wallet. The sad thing about it is that there was a lot of money in it, not to mention my driver's license and pictures of my grandchildren. I don't even care about the money. But the idea that someone out there knows my identity is not too comforting to me. I came down here to file a report in hopes that someone would be honest enough to... What was I thinking? I spent half my day in here just for the chance that there was one honest person left in this world. Look, I'm sorry, all right? Someone is going to find it. Oh, mm, they probably already have found it and are having a fine time maxing out my gold card. Oh, I don't know why I'm wasting my time. Whoa, 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 Kate. Come on now. Hey, Sheila? That's right, you. Why don't you stick around a few more minutes? We make enough noise. Someone's going to come out and help us. May I tell you something? Yes, you may. Well, what is it? My name. It isn't Sheila. Oh. Oh, really? Well, what do you know? Because you had me so convinced oh, of it. Oh, don't be funny. Actually, it's... It's Marge. What? How? You just, you just look like a Marge to me, sweetie. Oh, right. And you You're know good what else? at that. You know what else? It says it on your license. Oh. You. Where? Hey, I tried oh. calling. There oh. wasn't no answer. Oh. oh, lady, you can count it. I didn't take nothing. Come here. Look, that's how it was. This is my granddaughter. This is Sheila. She is pretty. I can even see the resemblance. Well, I guess you Better be going so you're not late back to your job. Mm -hmm. Whoa, hey, Marge. Oh. You forgot. I forgot my, my purse. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed the show Gray Matter. We're here with the actors Chris Dever and Holly Escott. Thank you guys so much for coming down and actually performing it live here. Our pleasure. In the studio. Three times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Chris, uh, what prompted you to reach out to me and want to do this in the studio? What was the impetus? Because you did this on stage back in May, a fine performance, the both of you. What May you? of 2014, in May fact. of 2014, yeah. yeah. That was mm -hmm. like... 30,000 beers ago. <laughs> so I couldn't even remember the experience. And uh, we wanted to put it on camera because we thought it was a scene that deserved mm -hmm. something potentially a little, a little more intimate. Mm -hmm. And then when we saw the, the interns as part of the uh, premiere that you guys had a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. that really kind of upped the game in terms of using cameras. And then uh, it's basically jealousy. Wanted to get in on that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. We were did. glad to have you. Yeah, hard to believe an actor getting jealous, right? <laughs> 
I'm very glad you did. So Holly, how did it feel being here in the studio doing it versus uh, a stage environment? Well, I had never done it. I mean, that was part of the reason I wanted to do it. I had never had the experience of um, being filmed in, in a studio. And um, it was scary. <laughs> How scary? What was scary about it? Well, it was just that it's, it's different, I think, from I'm used to a stage. That's all. It was something new. And, and the darkness and the light. It was, it was fun. I liked it. And that scary man that was in that scene. <laughs> that made it scary too, right? Please. No, nothing you're worried about, right? <laughs> well, so I had a question for you guys that um, might be hard to remember after all those beers, but when you first were preparing for this scene on the stage a year and a half ago or whatever that was, how did you get ready for these characters? Because at that time, you, I know, were playing three different characters in that show. So what was your what was your backstory for this character? For the uh, for the Russell character? For the Russell yeah. character, yeah. Not a huge story other than like someone who just has a huge problem with authority and keeps venting it in the wrong place. Hmm. And uh, I think your natural prejudice really came through the character, <laughs> which really made me mad on set and uh, that helped fire me through. I don't remember. <laughs> what, what, what about you, Sheila? I really don't. I mean, Sheila I, slash Marge. I, yeah. I, I don't remember. I know that I think I did a, a lot more this time, and that's one of the reasons I was anxious. I wanted to do better. Okay. Hmm. So. Do you think that, let's say that scene ended, if they met again, what do you think the interaction would be? Awkward. <laughs> How so? <laughs> well, I don't think that there was a real coming to a, a lot of understanding between them, do you think? Yeah, that was one thing that we definitely tried to do differently than the stage performance, mm -hmm. was in the stage version, we tried to kind of make it a little touch by an angel mm -hmm. at the end where mm -hmm. there's like this kind of epiphany and like mm -hmm. everyone's all like understanding each other. But maybe for whatever reason, certainly for me, like as an actor, it's hard to kind of do as an amateur actor. It's mm -hmm. hard to like make these big transitions mm -hmm. and not look awful. So it was like, if we just kind of keep it more of a grudging respect at the end, then that was an easier kind of transition to make, you know? So to answer your question, I think if they met on the street again, it'd be like that weird person you knew in high school who mm -hmm. knows things about you. So you just kind of, mm -mm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of exactly. <laughs> get around them and just get through it. Mm. Hmm. So I don't think they really deeply came to a mutual connected. understanding. Connected, yeah. yeah, yeah. So as, as actors, preparing for this scene now multiple times. Do you, did you give any thought at all to what, what you might do differently if, if you had the, A, if you had this happen to you in real life, not that that would happen to you perhaps, but if, if you were to find yourself in a situation like this, would you do things differently than Marge did? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Marge had a nice big mouth. <laughs> I would have been out the door. <laughs> that would have been the end of the scene, though. So that would have been a okay. tough scene to do. Yeah. He could have stayed by himself. He could have monologued. Well, you just try to get in your lap, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's more my difference right there. So. Wouldn't back down like that. <laughs> right for the laugh. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do, do you like your characters? You know... That's why I had to write a backstory. It was important, because I didn't like her. Why not? And you're supposed to like your character, aren't you? That's what I learned. Not necessarily. Uh, no? Guess, okay. Yeah. It's hard sometimes. Oh, okay. No, I, I didn't like her. Why not? Well, I just think she was very prejudiced and not introspective about her prejudice, and she, and I, I just don't like mm. people like that. You don't lie about your name? <laughs> like that? You don't, you don't lie about oh. your name? Your name's I probably not. would have. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've definitely done that. I can respect that one. Yeah. So what about you? How'd you feel about Russell? Yeah, I liked the fact that he had something to really vent. Like, mm -hmm. we've all been in the place where we, we're trying to do good mm -hmm. in whatever reason, and just people don't see it. Mm -hmm. Like, 
yeah. your family, people at work, yeah. whatever. And mm. it's like, no matter how hard you try, you're going to get some points knocked off you. Some demerits are being racked up. Mm -hmm. You can tell someone's doing it, but you don't know how to, what recourse to have. And then you just kind of lose control of it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a fantasy to like lose control and just go after someone and like, I mean, he went way overboard. He's conducting like this weird mock trial right. of her and that's unfair to her. I mean, she had a pretty natural response to a ruffian mm -hmm. kind of guy coming in, coming in a room. I mean, sure he took some money out of her wallet to pay for those <laughs> earrings. But, you know, <laughs> she should forgive him of that. So it's interesting having now seen the scene many times. It, something occurred to me today that hadn't occurred to me before when we were doing this on the stage, and I thought, well, I wonder if Marge had not moved that bag, would Russell have reacted the way he did? Would he have just given her the wallet? Well, yeah, I don't think he knew mm. yet, right? So, so the whole... The, the of course whole, he knew. He knew her name. He had already... But he didn't know who she was. Yeah. I mean, he walks into a place, and she's sitting there. The first reaction is her moving this. So his reaction was like, I'm here to do some good and, and I'm getting crap from this person who's like afraid of me. So when did he figure it out? He then? figured. Yeah, that's a good point. Exactly. When did he There's figure a point it out? where he's like suddenly onto her. He realizes yeah. that she's lied about her name. Yep. And now he's like, well, that's it. You've kind of broken a code mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. So now I'm justified in, in some sense prosecuting you for it. But I also saw the facial expression change. I, I think I pointed it out to you mm -hmm. in studio is that when you mentioned during your diatribe about, you know, you lost your wallet and all of a sudden, okay, mm -hmm. wallet, I found a wallet, boom, 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 somebody, you connected it and your facial expression changed dramatically about it. It's like, you, you were angry at her, but that, that's the moment you connected that she was lying to, or she was the person that was doing the wallet, that I, had the wallet. I'll be glad to see the scene and be able to see that. Yeah. Because when you're in it, you, you miss some of the things that fellow actors are doing. The one thing I take, I take away from that whole ending of the scene, and I always wondered why the writer didn't write it this way. Maybe it's, just, mm -hmm. it's, maybe it's because your character wouldn't do it. You never thanked him. Yes, I At the very I end, the last mm -hmm. thing she yeah. said. Well, at the very, very end, right? Yeah. But yeah. when you got the wallet, the first thing you were like, I, I, I think grabbed. The, you grabbed it, <laughs> right. and then you're like there, and then you kind of had your moment, <laughs> and you went back, and then you were yeah, checking, you and, then, and the first thing you're really doing realistic. is... I love when you say, I, I, I didn't take anything. Check everything. Everything's there. I, I tried calling and stuff. Yeah, but see, that's why I didn't like yeah. her. She do, didn't take what happened into account, really. So, so it's interesting. This is, this is a pretty intense scene. It's a pretty yeah. serious, mm. straightforward acting scene. And you've both done other scenes with us and probably elsewhere that, that involve more lighthearted humor, thinking of the bartender. Those kinds of things. So those were those thirty thousand drinks. The, there, that was a good start <laughs> for that. Forever. Absolutely. So when you when you think about playing these different kinds of characters, do you have a preference? Do you like do you like going sort of back and forth, or do you prefer the heavier stuff? I think at this point it's all a fun romp. You know what I mean? Because you don't really know what you're doing. So you got some comedy, you got some drama, whatever. Yeah. As long as you kind of get to sample it, mm -hmm. and you get cool people to work with, that makes it a lot easier. You know, because they can kind of forgive you of your, your big old errors. And what do you think, Holly? I like both. Do I, you? Yeah. But I don't think I could pick. Well, and it's nice that you don't have to. Because there are satisfactions <laughs> in, in both. Sure. Yeah. I, I have to say one thing. I'm watching the show, looking at both of your facial expressions. Like, I've seen it done a few different times. It was just unbelievable. It, it, the character comes out in your faces. It's just amazing watching that 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 on the screen. That was yeah. one thing that made us fiendishly jealous when watching the interns, because the stage scene is good because mm -hmm. people yeah. laugh. Yep. I remember on the stage production of that, people took a lot of those interactions mm -hmm. and they were laughing, like dozens of people were laughing, and we didn't even think of it mm -hmm. as like this kind of comedy confrontation between the two. So that gave it life on stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then here, there's no one going to be laughing. Maybe you guys in the control room or something like that. But when you saw the interns, it's like, okay, we want to be doing that mm -hmm. yeah. on a TV production and just yeah. give it a go. Yeah. Well, it was neat, like Joe was saying, because having seen it on stage and in rehearsals before, you don't notice those, those really delicate expressions mm. and seeing mm. the, the close-ups. That's when you start to notice, mm. oh, wow, look at what she's doing with her face. That's so cool. She's showing an emotion that you, you just can't see from the audience in, at a mm -hmm. stage show. So it was really, really cool. And one of the things I love about what we're doing here at WACA and, uh, is we're actually able to do our shows on stage, but we're also able to take some of those wonderful scenes, the intimate ones like you just did today, 
and bring more life to it, more substance, because th there's a big difference being on stage and doing the intimacy that you have here in the studio. Yes, so. that really is nice, having both. It, really it is. is. It's yeah. special, isn't it? Yeah. It's very cool. So thank you guys for coming down to uh, perform Gray Matter here in the WACA studios. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and I, th I thank you for being patient with us because we're trying more technique uh, that we learned from our summer and the interns. Yes. That we're picking up some... Uh, lessons we're learning learned. Lessons, yeah. lessons learned, and you're benefiting from them. And about how to do things differently and maybe film from different angles and get, and get uh -huh. different uh -huh. expressions there. Yeah. Yeah. God so, bless the production crew so, who puts up with yeah. us. Well, <laughs> right. they, I tell you, they were great. They're they were great awesome here. today. All, they everybody really Everybody there, Josh behind the camera, Mike and, and, and Paul in, in the studio were fantastic. But uh, I'll, I'll end it with this. You guys were absolutely fantastic to watch. I could actually go home right now and watch it again. Thank you. And Thank you, you so weren't much. even in it, Joe. You know what? I think, <laughs> oh, I think that actually, someone made, knows it, Joe. I think that actually yeah. made it better, didn't it? <laughs> That's no. why we had the interviews. That's why we had the interviews. <laughs> no. but, uh, All right. So next month, Katie, who do we have next episode? I have no idea. You Who's don't. here next month? Let me, let me check my briefcase. No, actually, <laughs> we have the wonderful people from the Katie Shanda Rendell's written play, The Seance. So we're going to have oh. all of the actors that were in the seance in our next episode here. We're going to have Mauro Ciccarelli, uh, Heidi Hansen, Julie Nardone, Jody Martin, and Adish Joshi. So uh, until next time, Ashton Community Theater Behind the Curtain. Thank you, Katie, for once again another wonderful show. Chris, Holly, thanks for coming down.